Well, greetings, hi everyone, and welcome back to the Bond Geek channel. Of course, I'm your host, as always, Henry, and joining me today is very, very, very special guest and proof to our parents that we actually do get along and can chat. It is my older brother, James. James, thanks for joining us on the channel, finally. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm really glad actually to have you on here because I always say it's really great within anything that you like. It's great when you agree, you can disagree, but you can have a conversation about it. And what really excites me today is what we're going to be chatting about is basically us sort of growing up very much on like the Brosnan era, you know, the greatness of that a bit, weaknesses. But also, again, um, for those I'll probably say right now, um, James isn't really much a fan of the, if you will, the Daniel Craig era of James Bond. I mean, that's fair. Would that be fair? Um, I, I, I think that's fair. I'll happily be a fan of the Craig era of Bond if someone can point out a single good thing about it. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. And I think it's just great to chat about, I think, the two different eras and like and stuff like that and sort of happy memories with it as well. But before we get into all this, everyone, can I just ask you, if you haven't already, do give us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Really is help for great more Bond content. And um, definitely comment down below if you'd like James to come back on the show and um, trash talk more of the Daniel Craig era, by all means. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Um, James, I wanted to start off with this. Um, one of my favourite memories and sort of connections I have with James Bond is actually when we were we were younger... It was the days of like PlayStation 2 when I used to have like my friend Edward over or like you had Johnny over or something. And there was those three multiplayer games we all played. It was Time Splitters 2 slash Future Perfect, Red Faction 2, but obviously here, 007 Nightfire. Oh, that was brilliant. Love that. I mean, I've, for me... All the memories. Yeah. Hmm? All the memories. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, I always remember, and I keep saying this on the channel... And I know you've commented on this for the past, but I know the map, it's Skyrail on Nightfire when you have the rocket launchers that you can control the missiles and all of us trying to find a hiding spot and shooting the missiles. Do you remember any of that? That was fantastic. That was, oh, I used to love doing that. Oh, yeah, because I remember when we started on that map, people would start off, you'd be running and gunning, trying to hide each other. Yeah. And you get the sort of smart kids. You would, you would then get a sniper rifle, try and find the most weirdest place to hide so no one would try and pick you there and snipe people off. Yeah. Until we discovered the rocket launcher with the homing, seeking missile you can control yourself. It was fantastic. And then you, I remember, were the king of literally placing the tripwire, like the laser tripwire things to stop anyone coming near you. You were the king of that. That's half the fun. I'm, I'm a natural troll, I can't deny. <laughs> so they think they've got you. So, right, I've got him. No, you haven't. I know. It was, um, I think, I've, I've often said in the channel, I'd like to get your opinion on this as well. The last Bond game we got in this community was in 2012 with um, 007 Legends. A terrible, terrible game. We are going to get another game, hopefully soon, from the makers of Hitman to make a Bond game. I think the Bond game... Huh? That would be good. Yeah, I know. We're all really, like, really excited about that potential. I really do think so strongly that we need more Bond games again, because for me, it just it heightened everything up, like in between the movies, like you could still play the games. I mean, heck, I, I was trying to Edward, one of these friends I mentioned earlier, my one, about in the Asian Under Fire multiplayer, how you had the phone with the zip wire and you just zip across the entire map going left, right and centre, just messing about yeah. as well. That was great fun. There were so many cool things you could do. Mm. It was great to get your friends over, try and dig out as many controllers for the PS2 as you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the multiplayer tab, trying to find the place you could sit. The days before DLC and microtransactions, but that's a whole different... Oh, thank you for on that. <laughs> you this and me could do a whole time. show just on just complaining about that left, right, and centre. Don't get me started. <laughs> I mean, I will. But <laughs> this is going to be uh, 12 hours later. No, I mean... Um, I mean, th that's one of memory that really just springs to mind. I mean, from your childhood, um, obviously, you know, I, I experienced it with you. Is there any, what sort of Bond memories did you have that really spring to mind that you enjoyed? Films or, or games, as it were. There's the original GoldenEye game and GoldenEye film, mm. the first one, the first Bond I ever saw. It was amazing. Fell in love with Bond watching GoldenEye. It was, I, it was, it was just absolutely incredible. It was like nothing I had, I'd seen before. Mm. As, um, on like the very beginning, where he's bungee jumping off that dam, all the way through the drama between him and the betrayal. Oh <laughs> with yeah. 
Sean Bean's character. Sean Bean was amazing in that. Oh, Sean Bean's just legendary in anything. Um, you know, again, I was watching... Um, so it's going off at a tangent again. I was watching recently the Sean Bean film Black Death. Yeah. Just remembering that. I was yeah, just... Yeah. yeah. I could never decide was that good or not. I, I kind of... Mixed I sort of enjoyed it. Memories of it. It wasn't great, but I enjoyed it. That's probably fair. It wasn't great. It's not going to win tons of awards, but it's not bad. And again, he did beat Daniel Craig in his Sharp series. <laughs> I feel I'm being very harsh on Daniel Craig. I am a big fan of him as an actor. I just, I was thinking about it again. I don't think he, his portrayal of Bond is mm. the strongest of the yeah. lot. And I include George Lazenby in that. Uh, but I do think he arguably got worse scripts or films to do. Okay. If he went back and did perhaps um, like Roger Moore, <laughs> Roger Moore scripts and did those films again, maybe bringing a bit more of the grittiness to it. And I like Roger Moore. Um, but he I doesn't. Like a campy Bond might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I, I still think it was good. How can you beat Bond having sex in Zero Gravity and End of Moonraker, the Minister of Defence saying, what is Bond doing, with Q going, I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. How can you beat that? True Brit. True Brit. You know you're a true Brit when you're always ready for action. Exactly. Yeah, baby. <laughs> But no, I Sorry, mean, I couldn't resist one dirty joke. Nah, I mean, before we get into um, sort of Pierce Brosnan era just a little bit more, again, you said like I know you're a fan of like Roger Moore. You're very much a fan of sort of the old Bonds. Any spring to mind? Because I know one is your one is a very much a favourite to yours. But I'll let you sort of say. I think you say starting off with the favourite. The favourite is obviously Pierce Brosnan. Mm -hmm. Here's the Bond I grew up with. Uh, I thought his interpretation was really good. How he managed to bring a sort of um, Timothy Dalton esque harshness to the character, but was also almost very charming and suave, and almost kind of did the sort of um, almost the charm of Roger Moore, but took out the campiness mm. by yeah. comparison. I like Brosnan. Um, I mean, the best Bond there is, I think, is, I think it's inarguable. My second favorite is, of course, Sean Connery. Mm. Sean Connery was absolutely amazing. And you know he's good when Ian Fleming loved him so much, he rewrote his character of Bond to be more like Sean Connery. For the record, everyone, I think it's fair to say that you need to give James a lot of, like, care and, like, you know, poor James here. He knows that because of me shoving years and years of Bond info. Do you know this? Do you know this? Henry, shut the... Up. I will not forgive you. That was it. One of those, like, those, those seen it. Um, uh, games, oh, God, yeah. The DVD players the years ago. Sorry, you go. No, please, please tell the scene again. That's brilliant. Oh, just, I could have killed you. Hen Henry was too good at the Bond scene it game, as I'm sure you can imagine. So there was, I think, um, the Bendixes were over? Bendixes. Some friends, some friends. Yeah, some friends. Some yeah. friends around. It was. And there was, like, me and the, 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 the other friends. We were teaming up to try and beat you because you were just impossible. Then, like, it was one of those questions where i was like guess the name of the character an e an o and an n came up they were not linked together they were spread out and henry goes ah oh, xena on a top how do you get that how do you do it there was an x at the front of the name it's like it wasn't it was very you know easy from there yeah i know yeah you're too good you're too good at this but, but what i remember is literally it became a sort of recurring joke. Yeah, we'll play it, but Henry was not allowed to play. Henry was just literally, if you couldn't get it, you, you call up on Henry. I was a lifeline in for who wants to be a millionaire, James Bond. Exactly. Like, well, you got too good. It's like even when we teamed up, and then we're all rolling the well, yeah, mm. rolling the dice, moving the character along the board, and then doing these questions. We still couldn't beat you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is my thing, fair enough. And um, yeah, of course. But I do know, and I'll, I'll probably say, I do know one of your favourite Bond films is actually *Live and Let Die*. Yes, um, a great um, one as well. Yeah, um, I appreciate it's probably, I, I maybe not necessarily everyone's favourite film, but I think *Live and Let Die* is really good. I think it's absolutely amazing. No. It's brilliant. I think the characters are great. I love like the bad guy Tiki the henchman with a claw. You know, even yeah. to this day, sometimes you know I don't do it in the family, but sometimes you go, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the crocodile farm is like legendary. And Roger Moore's best film. Yeah. Best oh no, I still I think Spy Love Me still is best. Oh, that is a good shout. I'm probably biased. I think let's say. Yeah. Never, never will die. So I think it's so good, but no, but Spy Love Me. That that. Mm -hmm. You might be right. I'll agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> no, it's been, no, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, I say, I love Live and Let Die. Great film. Just, you know, I, you know, it's getting much more love and attention again as years go on. Really fantastic to see. Um, but I know that's one of your favourites. Um, 
But yeah, let's just um, switch it to say Brosnan, because again, like you, it was from Mum who rented Goldeneye from Blockbuster. We both watched at the same time. Absolutely fell in love with it. Obviously, we also have Twine Never Dies, The World's Not Enough, Die Another Day with Kite Surfing a Tsunami. Um, you know, I know. Um, we'll never forget that. Um, move on, move on swiftly. <laughs> and, uh, just, just talking about the other sort of Bond films, like Twine Never Dies, World's Not Enough, and Die Another Day. I mean, what's your sort of reaction with those a bit? Um, <clears throat> if, I go, if I go with Tomorrow Never Dies, I'll. It's weird. I think it's one of those films that's technically amazing, but I don't think it has anything special. It doesn't have an edge or some kind of X factor to it. Mm. So though it's, I think, te- well, well, it's a really, it's a technically really good film, but I don't think it's a special one. Okay. Never right. No, fair enough. Um, World's Not Enough. I, I'm biased because I love Golden. I think World's Not Enough might be Brosnan's best one. I love. I'll always love Golden. Is my favorite favorite film. Favorite love- Bond film. A lot of people do say, like in the community, like Golden Eye is like Brosnan's best film, but they think his best performance is World's Not Enough. That's an that's that's absolutely right. Wait, now I think about it. That's um, definitely going on. That's it. Yeah, I mean, again, I I like World's Not Enough, even though I still stand by it's got great. It's not. It's got a great sort of pieces in it and scenes. I don't really think the map, the main story holds up very well. I mean, I ask you to try and remember it. Um, oh. Um... The main character that the uh, exactly point taken, point taken. <laughs> yeah. But again, I love it because you know it has the first proper female bomb villainess and Electric King in the film. Um, yeah. We're not going to shame my dad too much, but we know he gets very excited at that um, torture chair sequence, <laughs> which is hilarious. I thought we're keeping this clean. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't watch this. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh, he'll probably no, no. He'll watch it now because you're in it. This one. Um, <laughs> of course. Um, I will say this. I know this is this is slightly loaded because I know you will agree with me with this. We are massive Monty Python fans. We love the actor John Cleese very much. So, um, yes. one of the things, even though I was happy with like the reboot of Bond and Casino Royale and myself, I will lament. It meant that we had to stop having John Cleese's Q, who I thought was a great replacement for Des Llewellyn. The this is what I mean by I think they got it completely wrong. They were so desperate to sort of, in, in hindsight, they were so desperate to go right. That's that's the bond of that era, that mm. generation. We're going completely new, and because of that, in my opinion, there's like a bit of a cut off between mm. the two. Yeah, they should have done something more. Uh, I think it would be better. If even if they brought in John Cleese for a movie or two mm. and have the sort of the changing of the guard, here is the new way we all the new angle we want to take it in, the new angle we want to take the direction in for Bond. And I think that would have worked better. Cutting it off completely was a, I know, in fact, it's a brave decision, but it was almost, almost a bit of, it's not quite two fingers up at the, like the old, old school fans, but it was a kind of a, we're not really, we're, we're obviously not really necess- necessarily thinking about you. No, okay, I, I find that I find that very interesting because there's a lot of that state sentiment going around at the moment. Like, you know, the last film was like 2021. Um, yeah. You know, st- every time you, we've someone's asked you, you just said, "Oh, we're not working on the next one yet." It's like you're making it sound like you know, you just we'll get around to it when we can. Like, where's the passion at the moment, Barbara? Um, so a lot of us, you know. A lot of us are like hoping, you know, fingers crossed that, you know, Christopher Nolan wins like the Oscar for Oppenheim in the scene. They finally announce him as the director. We're still hoping, fingers crossed, on that one. Well, fingers crossed, because you can do, you can do a really good modern bond mm. and make it fantastic and awesome. It's just, in my opinion, I think it works better. You can't have something that's, you can't have like an old school bond. It wouldn't work in the modern era. In the mm. modern era. You need some kind of a balance between like, the past, the present, and the future where you want to take it into. Yeah. If they can link those up, kind of like, yeah, here's the traditions, the things we like, we're carrying on. Not so keen on these things and just, oh, so we're going to try this and do we think this will work? Kind of take Bond and, and say you can take the modern, modern modernity into Bond that way. No, I definitely agree. I mean, I'm keeping with just Brosnan just for a little, little bit longer, um, I mean, again, so many things like modernize it, revolutionized the Bond franchise. As I say, first female villain, you know, like Wei Lin from Tonera Dies was great. Um, as much as I, I always state, and I still state it, Die Another Day is the guilty pleasure James Bond film. 
Um, you know, it really is for me. It's the Flash Gordon of James Bond films. You just know it's bad, but you can't help but love it. And for me, part of that is the fact that it's Toby Stevens as the bad guy just makes it. Toby Stevens saved that movie, but I'm 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 the big I'm the biggest Brosnan fan. But yeah. I'm I'm sorry that it's not his fault because obviously he wasn't directing it and writing it. But someone clearly has having a I don't know a few two vodka martinis themselves <laughs> the way through it. Yeah, but shall we do this? And it's like no, let's have him surfing down a tsunami and all you know the massive wave whatever it was. And it's just yeah, someone needed to sort of take a step back and go. What are we doing here? Okay, here's a question for you. Um, it's again very biased a bit, but um, again, in the spirit of this, there are two films like you know that feel that it's the most jump the shark in the series. Yeah. Moonraker going into space and laser gun fighting, basically telling James Bond and Star Wars meshing together. Um, episode seven, the Mo the Martini awakens, if you will, um, or Die Another Day going to over the top. Which one would you say is like that's the one that goes most over the top, ridiculously stupid? Die another day, and because yes. it did, it caused so many of the problems that we have nowadays. Because they were clearly going, "Oh, we we messed it up in here. We need to sort of mm. try and reground it." Moonraker, it was perhaps it was a, uh, it, it was to hell to hell with it. It was great. It was fantastic. It was. Yes, kind of doing. Yeah, it's a bit. I don't know. Maybe it was a bit silly in ways, but it was. It was. It, it was the era. Space exploration, so they're trying to do these bits and pieces. Mm. It, it was good. It was great. It, it wasn't. It, it was. It, I don't think it was jump the shark. I think they pushed it and mm. perhaps pushed it a bit too far. But it was within the bound of James Bond believability. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, for me, I don't mind the space battle stuff because I'm like willing to go with it and all that stuff. You know me, I love that stuff. For me, it was the fact that the gondola in Venice inflated into a hovercraft and he just went across the whole. You know that bit. That was the bit when I was like, oh come on. Yes, it, yes, it was a little, even by Bond standards, a little silly. And I get it. I love the silliness at times. I lo it's not Bond until he has the car with the machine guns and rockets coming out of the car and all the rest of it. Yeah. It, it, but, but even that, that was a bit sort of what at all practical, what at all use would a secret agent have? <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 yeah, this is gondola. It just makes no sense at all. Weird enough, I, I get more annoyed at that than anything in the View to a Kill. Where a lot, often, I mean, I, I state this as well, going on to View to a Kill quickly before we move on to like other things. Stallone did not create the Expendables. Roger Moore did in a View to a Kill because he, I'm sorry, is expendable. He's he's an expendable. Oh, I, I liked that as a kid. When I when I look again as an adult, it's sad actually. He's, <laughs> he's too old. I know. It's a, it's really sad. I think the story in principle could have been a very good one, but he's just he's too old, and that changes. Not just obviously the dynamic between him and the Bond girls, but other things as well. It's just it, it, it's just yeah. not it's not Bond. A lot just of people Bond sad. A lot of people say it's like a well, missed opportunity if Timothy Dalton wasn't cast earlier and done a view to a kill. Yeah. Timothy Dalton versus like Christopher Walken could have been. Oh, Timothy Dalton. I didn't like his Bond films when I was a kid. As you grow older, mm -hmm. the most underrated, underappreciated Bond actor we've had. Oh yeah, I mean. Again, I know it's on put you, but like again, films do get a lot of like reappreciation over the years, and like re people grow up them. You know, like now we're about to see a bit of a Brosnan renaissance because of our generation is now becoming that sort of generation. Yeah. But a view to a um, license to kill has had a massive because like when we were kids, I, I often see it as like at the bottom of people's lists and thoughts and feelings. Now it's getting a lot higher. License to kill. Yeah, I I I really hope it does because Timothy Dalton got the short end of the stick on his films it's a pity he couldn't have done more I, I understand the reasons obviously they did decided not to carry on with him and yes it was quite a change to sort of mm. quite his um uh his uh rough and ready <laughs> very physical very uh very hard man bond but he was brilliant and his films yeah. were brilliant so now i uh, it is the bit now sort of moving on a bit to the um daniel craig side of things um again as you say i know you i know you actually do like daniel craig as an actor i know very much you like him like in defiance and like the bad guy in tintin and you love the, like the knives out movies you actually think he is a legitimately good actor just not bond he is one of our top actors of our generation without a shadow of a doubt period he's an amazing actor hmm. he is just for me he is not bond um can you could you maybe just go in a little bit more detail for you why he just never was James Bond? It, it, it's a, it's oh, I say a couple of things. No, it could be a couple of hundreds of things. Oh, yeah. I, I will try and 
pick my biggest three. For me, his bond was always a thug. Okay. He wasn't a hard man like Timothy Dalton, who was ruthless, get the job done. He was always just a bit of a thug with how he betrayed his character of Bond. Okay. Um, trying to think of a specific example, but I'll come back to, come back to that in a minute. Um, in terms of his, his dialogue as Bond, he seemed to want to pick up or have the sort of like, not campy Roger Moore, but have lots of the sort of the sayings, the little mm. uh, little uh, little quips here and stuff that Bond does. And I don't think he delivered them well once. It's just not Bond. It's almost like I'm trying to be Bond, but I'm a gangster. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, like, it's a bit, bit thuggish. And my, my third, sorry, I'll, I'll stop uh, wervling. The third point was looking back at the films and things he did, I don't think he got, it's because of that transition mm. from Brosnan to Craig. I don't think he got the best stories. I think if you threw him in something like Timothy Dalton's stories, he would have been a lot better. Okay, fair enough. I mean, um, obviously, um, just starting off, I remember the year he was announced. I mean, it was the year, obviously, you and me, I think, you know, months just before I watched Layer Cake, actually. Um, so, you know, again, I think a really great film. The thing I know him most, obviously, I had seen him in things like Sharp or Young Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider. Um, but, you know, that was something I, I sort of most knew him for. Again, I, I remember at the time... I was sceptical, but I think the trailers swayed me. And obviously, I just read the book, and the film yeah. did sort of actually follow the book. This is the second half of the film, follow the book incredibly closely. Um, so for me, I was just like on Cloud Nine. I love the parkour chase. And I do get what you mean about being a thug. Um, I mean, certainly in Casino Royale, because the whole point is, is if you will, that is like he is a bit of a thug, but he gets the ref he's meant to get the refinery and like become more Bond by the end of the film. But I do think it's a valid, I do think it's a very valid point. I just don't think he quite achieves that. Hmm. I, I feel like when I watch Daniel Craig as Bond, I'm not watching Bond, but it, it's just some uh, like uh, spy drama on TV. I just don't get the Bond vibes from him. Hmm. He doesn't portray that at all. I mean, another thing, I think you'll love this a lot, is you know, upon people are now looking back saying, ooh, was he really as good as Dove? I mean, everyone thinks I have a bit of a, a hard-on for Daniel Craig, quite far from it. I mean, out of the six actors, I would rank him probably fifth. Um, just beating Lazy Me because Lazy Me only did one. Um, my no, Lazy Me better. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. No, no, it's fair. It's all well and good, you know, just for that reason. I mean, again, his films have been like hit and misses for me. I mean, like, Cinerail was a win for me. Quantum was not that good um, for many different reasons. Skyfall, for me, was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, Spectre was dreadful, I think. Yep. Uh, no time today. I felt ended his tenure at least on some point on a high note. Uh, maybe not the biggest high note, but I do think at least of all Bond actors, he actually had a definitive, if you will, ending to his tenure. I'd agree with your analysis entirely. I really liked actually Skyfall when I yeah. first saw it. I was like, actually, I thought this is this is Craig's Bond, and mm. that felt like Bond. And I didn't like some discontinuities in the story i'm pretty sure from memory they changed his entire backstory from the previous bonds no to like where his parents were the rest of it unless i've misremembered that no no I mean, it never really went into detail but all the um information there is accurate you know andrew bond scottish oh, father enough. danish mother um you know all that stuff i mean skyfall the house and stuff was completely made up for the film but you know the parents stuff was correct oh. and Fair enough, I'm, I'm wrong on that thing, clearly. But I, I thought at the time, Skyfall, this felt like Bond and Craig was mm. was Bond and I enjoyed it. But then I watched it back again and I was like, actually, I, I think almost, I, I don't know if I wanted it to be Bond more than it was. Mm. I don't think it really was that much. Yeah. And as you say, his last, sorry, it's his last film, I think she said, it was it, it was the best version of Bond that Craig tried to produce. I did believe at times, in a few moments, he was Bond in the last film. Hmm. At least he got to end, end it for himself on a high, which is always good. So I don't wish him any ill will. Oh, no, uh, not I say at all. I mean, as I say, I, I, I compare it a bit, right or wrongly, a bit to like Doctor Who in a sense, you know, if you don't like the current actor, you just wait a couple of years or whatever, and you know, someone new will come along, you might prefer that better. Um, yeah. One thing I've always liked about the Craig era, though, in, in general, was the people who got to be the villains. I mean, you had Mads Mikkelsen, the chief. Oh, yeah. Dominic Green, I admit, was a bit of here. But, you know, Javier Bardem Silver, I think, is memorable and very much, yeah. like, there. Christoph Waltz Blofeld was a bit of a wasted opportunity. Certainly when they tried to EastEnder it, you're sort of my brother rubbish. Um, just, I just... Uh, I... 
the, the, this is where I get in trouble. The writers and, and the directors yeah. of these really recent Bond films, they, they, they either don't understand Bond or think they can do better than Fleming or I, their interpretation of his books was not the film. It wasn't good at all. Again, I'm not trying to say I'm doing... I think, based off your interview, they're trying to, like, turn Bond more... You know, the books were always, like, novellas. You know, they were meant to be easy reads, you know, great sort of spy thriller yeah. stuff. I think there was very much an essence in the Craig era to try and elevate the films to be much more, if you will, like, Oscar-winning movies than being what they... Maybe what they were. I think that was... I think that's the thing. Um... With it, but they should realise that they should follow the core message. They're in the books, enough is what is what they need. Mm. They, they, they they didn't trans the, the Bond and the Craig. That's what I'm saying. When I, when I look back at it, I, I'm not. Was Craig that bad at Bond, or was he just given the short end of the stick in um, the story? Do you know, I did laugh at, and I think someone made this great point actually about the Craig era. Is nowhere in the Craig era is him being really happy or like you know my life is like this amazing thrill ride it's, he's always like mopey and like down all the time a big, a big sort of theme like your general atmosphere change from his bond to other ones other ones there have been like timothy dalton's or even mm. brosnan at, at times there was there are times when things are dark dark and hard but the, the point is it's like you bond always finds a way through it yeah yeah he said whether it's finding a way around or he just digs deep and gets through it whereas Craig was just a bit kind of it's like waiting for the end almost like a sad end yeah no I, I get where you, I get where you come from I mean again um sort of keeping with no time to die a bit again Rami Malek I think I know a lot of people didn't like him I, I found him really interesting as Safin as the bad guy there but yeah it was good I would like to ask you this question. I think this is all a lot of people now will be probably thinking about with you and how you feel about the Craig era. Obviously, they did complete 180 and actually killed Bond at the end of No Time to Die. Now, for me, I always read it as it was the end of Craig's Bond, not James Bond in general. This like thing that started with Casino ends with No Time to Die, complete story in one sense. Um, as a fan watching that and you saw Bond actually find a side, the way to save the world is to kill himself and save his family. How did you sort of react to that a bit i thought that was fine i thought it was absolutely fine do i in principle like the idea of bond dying no mm. i didn't like um, when he went away for a while and they said the last film there was another there was another agent playing 007 it's like james bond is always 007 yeah but actually i thought for his bond series it was really good we can't get too picky on i think I, I, bond is not necessarily the most serious or like believable realistic sort of tv series out there i mean bond be. wasn't he starting in like the 60s or 70s as 50s bond? If, he, if it was still the same bond he'd be like bond with the zimmer frame i'm gonna get you <laughs> as he starts trying yeah. to chase them at this stage so it's great it's fine if that's how craig wanted to end his thing it's like this is my bond it's done great yeah i mean everyone just accepts you know yes the the actor you change the actor even though it's the same person from yeah, Connery exactly. to Brosnan and stuff. I mean, obviously, we're going to get a full reboot eventually. We know that's going to happen. Um, oh, great. I, mean, I mean, this is, I think, sort of finishing, you know, going into more anything. Um, obviously, I'm much looking forward to whatever they come up with next. You know, there's many different ideas going around, whether it be like Christopher Nolan directing or maybe even Guy Ritchie, maybe even potentially doing it. Well, after... Okay, I know this is off screen. He's done a new World War II film with Henry Cavill coming out this year. It looks amazing. Def and, you know, he's done amazing work from Sherlock. Well, Henry Cavill is the new Bond, so I'll be happy. <laughs> we'll get on to that bit as well. But, um, you know, Guy Rich is getting quite a bit of name, you know, from like the live action Aladdin, the Sherlock Holmes movies, and like that coming out and some other things. Um, yeah. You know, potentially, I mean, as a fan of Bond yourself, not, you know, obviously not like within a Bond community like going mad in it, but, you know, I know you care about it. It's a brilliant thing. What do you want to see that would excite you, like, you know, knowing what direction they might go in next? Um, the, I think a little bit of what I had uh, said before, they need to link Bond, to the modern, new modern Bonds, to the movies that have gone before mm. in the spirit and intent of them. I have no issue with them modernizing certain elements of Bond. And yes, let's modernize some elements compared to how it used to be. But I mean, quite frankly, at times it felt like in some of the movies, they weren't just ignoring the things that had gone, up, gone before. They were sticking two fingers up at it. Mm. So if they, if they, even if they, I, I, I don't know, 
What was, it, was it there like a rumor about them potentially going back to the 60s and 70s with Bond? It, it's not a rumor. It's more like a... Um, sorry, because I was talking to... Again, everyone, I was just talking to James about this. There is a lot of thing like within some... Some of us in the Bond community would love it like in order to differentiate it and really give it something new and allow Bond to go back to being who he truly is and being something unique yeah. in the market, why don't we take Bond back to like the 1960s and do period piece movies? You can still talk about stuff that's happening in the world today, just do it more of an allegory way. And that way you... I think that would be great. Mm. You just need to go back to the spirit of Bond. I would... I would, Yeah, because obviously I'm an expert on these things. I, if I were to give advice or suggestions... Go look at the Brosnan era. Hmm. Look at what it did well and capture that essence. Hmm. Um, the Brosnan era, because the Brosnan era was like just slightly different from like the, the previous generations. It, they it kind of pseudo modernized it, I would I would argue, but it was still very much Bond. Hmm. Bond is this, as you say, like a um, you say he, he's, an, he's the educated chap who went to university, but he's also a hard man. Yeah. Um, he, he can do. He can do all. He, he can do all the civilized stuff, all the um, uh, <laughs> the best left unseen stuff. Mm. And he should be there, going up against the going up against the insane odds, taking out the baddie, rather than Daniel Craig's Bond, which was kind of a bit like, oh, things wrong, I'm sad, and then he can't act the part. He can't just do all the bits and pieces there. I, I, I know I'm working now. I said, yeah, no. go back, go back to the it, go back to the Brosnan era. The stuff that made that great, carry it on. Do your tweaks and things to how you think it's best for 2024 and onwards to make it make it your own and modern and good. That's what I do. I stop worbling. And um, I think last words. I know you sort of gave a bit of answer away. Um, who would you want as Bond, and who would you potentially want directing? Because I know you know a couple of directors. That I know you think might be good at it. Right, I think um, directors I appreciate I don't know as well as you. I think Christopher Nolan sounds like an excellent shout from the movies he has directed and things before. I think he's all... I, I, the key thing for a director for me is they understand it is, it is Ian Fleming's ideas, mm. work and project, not your own. You are there to you are there to put Ian Fleming's ideas on the screen, not do your interpretation of it. Yeah. Um, so, but in terms of uh, actors for James Bond, I think it's for me, it's between two. Either it has to be either, or really, my first choice is Henry Cavill or Reggie John Page. I think those two are the clip for in terms of keeping with that Bronson era, but still, when you want to give a bit of a um, uh, a, a Dalton hardness to it, as Bronson did, those two, those two actors, I think, would absolutely get Bond and deliver a fantastic, so fantastic performance. Okay, I mean, I, I I knew you really liked Henry Cavill. There, I mean, I still, I mean, again, I still don't think he's going to do it. Away. I still don't think he's going to do it because I think he's obviously he's very passionate about making his Warhammer forty k TV show and producing it and being all part of that. I think that will stop him as well. Like his Highlander reboot, uh, which I know he's like it's a massive mistake. I'm sorry, but the, I, I I don't know. Oh, uh, at least at least, I don't know. Henry Cavill is the clear and obvious first mm. choice. Um, find a way to get him to do it. He's clearly the right person. Reggie John Page would be great. I think he's still relatively young. So you need to get Cavill for, for five, ten years because Cavill's not the youngest now. Get a, yeah. get two or three movies out of Cavill, then do Reggie John Page after that would be my preferred option. Yeah, that's potential. I mean, that's potential. I mean, I didn't know you were such a fan of Reno Jean Page. Maybe taking taking over the role. Yeah, sorry, actually. I got his name wrong. Um, I, I really think he's a great actor. I know I've only really seen him in Bridgeton and bits and pieces, some other thing. I'm not the biggest fan of Bridgeton on that. Well, I like Bridgeton. I just I've not never it. seen him. You just watch him in Dungeons and Dragons. I liked them that. Yeah, the I like that. Um, I, 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 yeah, either of those two. The other ones they're talking about, Aiden Turner. Aiden no. Turner not really being talked about at the moment. It's um, the one of the big names going is the actor Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh dear. God, <laughs> um, I think it'd be quite good. Well, actually, if, 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 I, I'm sure he's an excellent actor. To the mm. if they if they decide to go with him rather than the clear obvious two to the Bond directors and filmmakers out there, I, the only thing I can say to you honestly is good luck. <laughs> Um, so, so you did send that in a message to me privately as well. I do remember that exactly. Um, but no, that was good. I mean, um, you know, there are plenty of people's names going about um, at the moment. Some smaller actors, some big actors. I mean, I, I think it's a lost thing that we never got this actor to be Bond. Was um, I would have loved seeing Tom Hardy do it. 
that that they, they picked Craig over Hardy is criminal. They didn't actually. I mean, it was Cavill they picked him over. Henry Cavill over Tom Hardy. No, no, no. Sorry, everyone. Um, I say, um, I, I know I've told you this. Um, and prepare to see my brother have a serious meltdown on on live on this channel. Everyone, in two thousand five, it was between two actors for Casino: Daniel Craig, who was Barbara and Michael's favorite, and the studio wanted a much younger twenty year old Henry Cavill. They chose Craig over Cavill. Are you serious? So, everyone, let's just let James. Um, Are you? I'm not allowed to swear. <laughs> Well, the decision. Well, Cavill's gone back and said he's actually glad he didn't get picked back then. He was twenty years old. He was still young, very you know, not really doing it. Um, he is quite young for a bot. You really want an actor in their thirties or or early forties. Yeah. So there's a bit of longevity to it. Um, I, I can get that, but it's just why did you pick Craig? <laughs> why? If then, fact, I, I don't know. I, I maybe I'm trying to. Trying to find balance, I, I I think maybe Craig would have been better with the different films, different yeah hmm. earlier films. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, um, I say we don't you know, obviously we don't know what's going to happen next. Um, it's just you know a mystery, very really much. I still think we're going to get some big news this year about it. Um, I'm just hoping. I hope so. It'd be it'd be really the kind of thing I think everyone could want. Because yeah. obviously, uh, it's, it's like it's easy to get down. But so ha having some good news about Bond coming forward is like right. We've got this plan. We're going to do this. We're going to say we, we got the oil feeling really confident. Yeah. We're going to go back maybe to I don't know. Yeah, go back to the seventy star movies with our new Bond. We're going to do these things here. That'd be really good. I know. We'll say we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, but I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, James. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, obviously, first time, maybe potentially first of many. We'll see how people um go with it. Um say just um yeah just thank you and i'm i know i'll be seeing you soon anytime absolutely see you soon thank you everyone. well everyone thank you for joining us obviously two brothers chatting reminiscing about the good old days a bit certainly and um the lessons we can go from here is multiplayer was better when it didn't have online play it was with a multi-tab and that yeah. was the best way <laughs> what do you mean you gotta have got a friend i've got I a know. friend i've got to invite them over i know you got to invite friends over and play each other oh no 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 you can't do that <laughs> No, it's, yeah, I wish it was that way. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye.